Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we're going to be making some Father's Day cards slash masculine cards. I am using one of the guys, uh, really love that sentiment set, and then I'm also using the Into the Woods 3D embossing folder, Tall Pine Stencils, and the Lovely Layers Slice and Stump. So, like many card makers, I struggle with making cards that are more on the masculine side. And there are some card makers that don't even bother. Like, they don't change their card making style for their recipient. Um, but I do. And so here's just a couple of ways that you can create a more masculine feel for those guys that you love in your life. Um, and it's going to give us some texture and it's going to give us a little bit of metallic because, um, well, I think for some people, like, they feel glitter is not, and you guys know I love my shine, glitter doesn't work for um, masculine cards. Metallic definitely does. Like, you could use, you know, a foil or, um, you know, a, a silver or gold. Th those things um, you definitely see even in, like, your uh, store-bought cards. So here... This is the Tall Pine Stencils. There's four of them. And all of these cards end up being monochroma <laughs> monochromatic, even though that wasn't my intention. But that's what we ended up with. So I'm just going in with some blues. And because of the way Honey Bee makes their stencils, they're clear and they're etched, which means that the other trees that you're not putting on are etched into the stencil, which makes it really easy to see where to line them up. Plus, you can see through them. So you can see exactly how everything is going to look as you're going. So I totally love that. I also wanted to mention, just kind of on a sentimental note, and we all have different things that we call, um, you know, our parents or our grandparents or aunts and uncles or, or whatever. And so the Mother's Day and the, this is the one of the guys, the Father's Day set that Honey Bee has come out with is so inclusive for so many different titles of which you would maybe be calling somebody. Um, and it's the first set that I have ever seen. I called growing up, you guys know, because I talk about Graham all the time, uh, I called her Graham Cracker. But I called my grandfather Papa. And this is the first set I have ever seen that has that name in there, which I think is super common in the South. Um, and so I just wanted to mention, I just loved seeing that in there. Um, so anyway, back to the the card. Uh, so I used um, Salty Ocean to do all over in the background. I'm going to cover that up, but it gives me a, a brighter blue as my base. And then I went in with um, prize ribbon, and then I did just the bottom of the, like, those trees um, with a little bit of, is it chip sapphire? I think it is. And now I'm going to go in with the next layer, and I'm going to start with the chipped sapphire, and then I'm going to shade that with the uncharted mariner, and then for the last one I'm going to do black, and then I'm going to put... Um, I know you shouldn't think it would matter if you put something over black, but because you're layering ink, uh, you can actually kind of tint your black a little bit. And so I'll be going over that with some of the Uncharted Mariner as well as the Chip Sapphire, just to add some green and blue tones. So this one isn't 100% monochromatic because I did try to throw in another kind of like complimentary teal-ish color. Um... But yeah, anyway, was just, I really liked the way that the colors looked together. Uh, and you can see as we're going, we're starting to get these kind of tall pine trees. So let me tell you, first, before we get any farther, um, it is Sunday of the Memorial Day weekend. And I just want to remind you, in case you missed it in the last video, tons of sales going on, huge amounts of sales. Um, I have been updating that list over on my blog. I will link it down below if you're interested. If you are a person who has already gone shopping and you have used my links, let me just tell you thank you so much. That is so immensely helpful to me to be able to continue to do what I do and make these videos for you guys. Um, so I just really appreciate. I know that it's kind of, it can be kind of a pain to hunt the link down. Hopefully the sale page makes it easier. And then if you're ever wondering like, oh, I'd really like support Kelly, but I don't know where her links are. My affiliate links are almost always listed on that page, even if they're not associated with a sale. So yeah, there's that. Um, yeah, so I tried to do this video was originally yesterday. 
Honeybee was supposed to, well, they did have a blog hop. I was supposed to, or a YouTube hop. I was supposed to be in it. Um, and I could not, could not get my microphone to work. Now, this microphone is a more expensive microphone. I've had it for a couple of years. It's really highly rated. Um, and I love it. I've never had any issues with it. Now, I have owned it for a couple of years. Uh, but I honestly thought the issue was my old laptop because my laptop is not new. And I have had plenty of issues with that. <laughs> so um, I actually switched over to the, my new laptop um, and I tried it in there and it like would not link up. And I saw a bunch of things online when I was trying to figure out what the issue was that like Windows 11 has all these issues, um, like acknowledging the Blue Yeti microphone because of different drivers and things like that, which you're not supposed to need uh, any drivers for this microphone because it's a plug and play. Like you literally just plug the USB in and it's supposed to acknowledge it. But anyway, I could not get it to work. And I was happy. This was Friday night. Yes. Uh, here's to the point where, see, I've now I've put down the black soot and obviously it looks, um, it just looks a little flat. And so going in and adding the color over top of it, this is the Uncharted Mariner, um, just helps it to look a little bit more vivid, even though it is still a black there. Um, I moved my stencil. It just wasn't sticking as well. And I think that's because um, I kind of lined everything up to the left hand side. And so there's not as much surface area to stick to my stamp wheel. Um, but anyway, so I was doing this on Friday night. I was, it was like two hours. It was like two hours. And then finally I was like, okay, maybe it is my microphone. Maybe it's the cord. Like maybe because it clearly is getting power. It's on. Sometimes it would connect. Sometimes it wouldn't. Um, but it wouldn't stay connected. Let's talk about the card. So now at this point, you could totally just go with what you've got. But I want to add some texture to this because I don't have a lot going on in the card to make it interesting. And so in order to do that, I am going to use some paste. You can pick any of the stencils, whichever ones you like. I decided I was going to go with the first one, which had that prize ribbon underneath it. Um, and so I'm lining, I'm relining up the, that same stencil. And then you can use any paste you want. I, however, I'm going to use... Um, I have a white from Hero Arts, and then I have a white pearl. The pearl is going to give me that kind of metallic look, and then I'm going to be coloring it with some blues so that everything kind of matches. So I'm just going to scoop some out. I'm going to put this right on my um, glass board, which, by the way, I have a coupon for those for 20% off if you're interested. Um, and then they, I'm going to put in just a dot of Salty Ocean and a little drop of Chip Sapphire, and I'm going to mix that up. I will caution you, you don't want to add a ton of liquid because you still want it to have its same paste properties. Um, but so once I started doing this, it was too much of a baby blue. I wanted it to be a little bit darker, so I'm adding one more drop of the Chip Sapphire. And these are just the reinkers that I have for my distress inks already. Um, so I'm mixing that up. I was happy with the blue that it became. And then I'm just going to put this on like any other paste. So I'm just going to go right over top of my stencil, but it's going to have that really pretty metallic sheen, which is going to add a ton more interest and kind of just bump the design up a notch. Since all that I have going on for this card is my background. My background is the star of my show in this case, because I'm only going to put a sentiment on it and then a couple little accent pearls. And then that's it. That's going to be the whole thing. So here I'm just going through making everything, you know, sure it's all filled in. And then I'm going to scrape off my excess. And then I always take mine to the sink immediately to wash them off just to make sure nothing dries on there. But look at that like pearly metallic sheen. Super cute. Now we're on to the next because, you know, we're, we're making three cards in this video. This one I've picked some greens for and you're going to notice when I'm putting down the greens. I used mowed lawn, peeled paint, pine needles, and rustic wilderness that this ink blending does not look good. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm not I'm not trying to blend the colors. I'm not trying to get solid color. I'm not doing any of that. And you don't have to either because it's not going to matter for this technique. Um, so I'm just trying to get some color down on the paper and I'm just doing it, you know, a little bit 
randomly, whatever, whatever I'm, I'm, I'm happy with. And again, it's a couple of different greens. Um, you could do this with blues as well. You could do this with teals. Um, I saw, um, one of the, uh, design team members, which I thought was brilliant. She, it was actually the, the stencil that we just used. She actually did it with pinks and then she put a Merry Christmas sentiment on it. And I thought it was brilliant. So here is the into the woods. I'm going to line mine up at the top. This is the 3D embossing folder. This is going to give us the texture that we're looking for. So the easiest way to get the texture, obviously, is the, the 3D embossing folder. Um, it's, it's just, it's super well done. It gives you these great trees. So now we're going to just run it through. For me, I'm using a platinum um, from Spellbinders. So you want the A platform, your folder, and then you want the adapter plate. So now I'm going to go back in once it's been embossed and I'm going to add colors. I tried to keep it to the same spots that I had added it originally, but if you don't get it perfect, like don't fret about it. That's not something to be worried because they're all greens. They're all going to work really nicely together. So as you can see, when we're going back in here, this is going to help those trees to like the texture to pop. The reason that we did the first round is so that we would have color over all of the areas, the light areas and the dark, like the embossed areas and the popped up areas. But this is going to give us even more contrast to really help that texture kind of pop out, um, which is what I was going for. So just going in, doing the ink blending uh, with all of the colors. And then we will add the metallic to this as well in a different way. Um, so there really should be uh, something for everyone in this video, no matter if you're a stencil person or an embossing folder person or a die cut person. We've covered all of all of the bases. Um, alternatively, if you're just a stamp person and you don't have any of those other things, I would recommend that you do some metallic embossing. Um, and then that would give you the texture in your background and it would give you that metallic. So now that that's done, I'm going to put it back in. I'm going to, you can feel it line up to make sure everything's going to line up. And I'm just going to open it up. I'm going to double check that I've put it in the, the right way. And the embossed portion is the part that I want. And then I am going to take this. This is the gold uh, metallic pigment ink from Honeybee. And you can swipe it on if you just want a little bit. I wanted a lot of gold. And so I'm inking up the door of my 3D embossing folder like a stamp. I'm tapping it up and down to getting a lot of pigment on there. And again, I'm just going to make sure my paper is lined up with that design. And for this one, because I don't, I want to make sure it does not move around at all. I'm going to tape my embossing folder shut. I'm going to run it back through. Again, A plate, folder, or, um, ad adapter plate. Same sandwich as the first time around. I'm going to run it through and that's going to deposit all of that beautiful gold ink into the crevices of our embossing folder. This one turned out to be my favorite. Even though blue is my boyfriend, I loved this card. I thought I loved the way that the metallic was kind of pushed in there and you could see it from all these different angles. I thought this one was super fun. For the last card, we're going to use die cuts. So the stump and slice lovely layers um, is right now because it's being released with a masculine release. Um, that's what it's you're going to see the majority of the examples with. But I really think that this could be used beautifully with florals. Um, so each slice has a outside piece for like the bark and an inside piece um for the like raw sections of wood. This first one, I went in pretty heavy handed with the uh, brushed corduroy and it ended up being too dark. I didn't like it. So I am going to lighten it up as, as I go forward. Then I'm going to add a little bit of extra shading with vintage photo um, just around the edges for the bark pieces. I'm going to start with the vintage photo and then I'm going to add my extra shading around the edges with ground espresso. Um, and you can see I'm getting fingerprints all over the place, but it doesn't really matter because that's the bottom piece. So my, my wood grain is going to be glued over top of that. Um, so this is the, the largest one, like I said, little dark. So, um, you can still see all of that like beautiful embossed detail. Um, and 
then we're just going to move on to the next. So this one I was less heavy-handed. I, I used a much lighter touch with the brushed corduroy, and I liked that. Also, I should have mentioned, I cut them out of um, Nina Desert is a desert storm cardstock um so just any like whatever craft cardstock is your go-to you can use that's what i used oh it's the sa sand desert sand no i think it's desert storm whatever it'll be linked below guys um and then we're gonna go through we're gonna do all of these and then we're going to glue them to put them together so anyway back to my issues with technology so I worked on it for hours and hours and i could not get it to go um it would connect i would get like two minutes of uh, voiceover recorded and then it would disconnect. So it was endlessly frustrating. I tried you know, like even hunting through peanut stuff to see if I had another cord that would match um, the adapter. I did not. I, I finally just ordered one on Amazon and I was like, it is what it is. Um, so about this time uh, that I'm giving up in frustration, Miss jelly bean wakes up now she had her uh 18 month appointment which means she had her vaccines so she had a little bit of a fever um before she went to bed so i went in i checked on her she was she had a very low grade fever i gave her a little bit more tylenol we snuggled in the chair i laid her back down and then when i came out of her room it was connected i could see it and i was like oh my gosh maybe i will actually be able to get this done let's go back to the card so here, in order to add the metallic to these, I'm just going to add it around the edges of the bark. So you can either dip it in, that's what you saw me doing, um, or you can pick up your pad and kind of swipe it on. And then I'm using gold embossing powder. Now here, I'm just dipping it right into the container. Uh, eventually, I moved it onto the lid um, to just, you know, roll it around in a circle and get the embossing powder on there. Um... But I will be honest with you, eventually I just switched over to like my regular piece of paper um, so that that way I didn't have to mess around with the edges of the lid and that worked well. And then I am holding this one with my fingers because it is the largest one, but I will switch over to my tweezers at some point because my fingers are not made of asbestos and <laughs> I, it was not, I shouldn't have been saving it or I shouldn't have been holding it. So you can see that it just adds a little bit of a metallic and then we're going to use this um to build ourselves a background that's raised and textured uh with our die cuts so if you don't um maybe maybe your your person isn't a woodworker but they're really into like gardening or something you could do this same premise with um, some beautiful foliage. Uh, Honeybee has the uh, spring greenery. That would be a, a great one to kind of build a background with. Um, just anything that's going to be a little bit larger of a die cut so it doesn't take you 500 years and you can do you know this in kind of this monochromatic way so it doesn't look super busy. So the other thing that I did I really kind of wanted the uh, wood portion to stand out a little bit more. So I took a, um, a ink blending foam and I just picked up a little bit of that gold and I just kind of rubbed it across the, the top. You can see I'm kind of like pushing and turning. Um, and that added a really soft metallic to the wood. I'm going to try to catch it here. Um, you can definitely see it in real life. I realize it's probably hard to see on camera, but I really liked the way that looked. And so I did that to all of the pieces. Once the pieces were done and they all had their metallic on there, then I'm going to start building my background. Here I have it all laid out, um, and I did mine so that they were touching, uh, but you don't have to. You can do your pattern however you would like to do your pattern. I'm also, the uh, cardstock on the background is Woodland from Hero Arts, which is just like a rich brown color, uh, and I thought that that played nicely with the lighter browns of the wood um, and that you can see that little gold metallic kind of popping. If you get any on the wood grain part, like any of your embossing on the wood grain, I kind of liked that so I left it. Uh, if it was a lot, I just brushed off some of it with my finger so that there was just a little bit left um, and then I just, like I said, I just left it and heat embossed it. So anyway, she woke up, I came out, it was hooked up, and I was like, oh my gosh, I might actually be able to get this done. And then I got four minutes into a voiceover and it died again. And so I was like, I'm, I gotta walk away. I have to. Um, so needless to say, I did not make the hop. 
but the hop still did go on. Uh, so if you missed it, um, I would head over. It starts with the Honey Bee channel, their YouTube channel. I would start there and, um, you know, check out, see what they have going on because uh, there's prizes to be won. Always here for the prizes. You guys know that. So once this is done, I trimmed off my excess. And in order just to make these pop out a little bit more, I know we're going to have one, one Copic marker in the entire video. Um, I just added a little bit of a shadow. This was kind of challenging because I did butt them up right against each other, but I just kept my pen, um, well, my marker pretty vertical for the most part, um, just so I didn't color onto the die cut pieces. And I just did down into the left to add a little bit of a shadow to help kind of lift them up off the base. And then that is that one. So now we're going to move on to the sentiments. In this, um, oh, we're going to recap too, just so you can see all the ones that we're working with. So we've got the um, gold trees, we've got the gold stump and slice, and then we've got the blue pearl uh, metallic stencil. Here I've just picked some um, card stocks that I thought matched. It didn't, the green didn't match. Uh, it was, too, well, it did match. It was too matched. Um, but so I'm going to stamp these. There's two large sentiments in this sentiment set. And one says happy Father's Day. And the other one says with love on Father's Day. And then I just picked out a couple of sub sentiments. Um, I picked, uh, thank you for everything you do. You mean so much to me. And you're the best. Um, so the blue one I'm going to stamp in white because I feel like that makes the most sense. You could also do silver. And then the green and the brown I'm going to do in gold. And I'm using pigment inks as my base for both of those. Both those pigment inks are from Honey Bee. They stamp fantastic. And then, um, this is funny, I kind of ran into an issue with the blue one. After I put the embossing powder on it, I dropped it. <laughs> I dropped it. And then it's uh, knocked off my embossing powder and it smeared my ink. So I ended up flipping that piece over and doing it again, and then it came out fine. So, um, yeah, so where are we at? So I called it a night, and then the next morning I was telling my husband about it, and then he just walked in here and he was like, well, let me see, you know, and I was like, no, I tried plugging into the old one, the new one, none of it worked, blah, 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 and then he just plugged it into the computer on the first try, and it worked. So, yeah, that's, technology was just like, I am not your friend today. So I just had to accept that it wasn't, and now it's going up. Uh, a day late, but that's okay because still plenty of time for Father's Day, which is the whole point of the video. Um, so these are being heat embossed very quickly. Um, like I said, I realized that the green uh, did not match. And what are these? These are nautical from Hero Arts and what is it? Shamrock? I think it's Shamrock. So I'm going to cut these out with their coordinating dies. The other ones I just trimmed into little labels um, and ran these through the die cutting machine. So once I realized that the green did not match uh, or matched too well, see how it doesn't pop off the page? It just kind of blends in. That's okay. Don't don't fret about it. We can totally fix it. I'm going to go in with Rustic Wilderness, which is a little bit of a darker green, and I'm just going to ink blend that cardstock right over top of it and see how the gold like pops off. I'm using a leftover piece of um, masking tape to just hold it in place so I don't get ink all over my fingers. Um, and then there was another boo-boo that I did. You guys know I like to include my boo-boos. There was another boo-boo that I did. Here, I'm just taking a, a dry cloth and buffing over the embossing to clean up any of that extra green ink and help the gold kind of pop forward. But if you remember back, I did a video like maybe two months ago where I tried to cut the uh, piece of paper that had already been 3D embossed and it tore, like it tore off the side of my card. Well, do you know what happened? You think I would have learned my lesson. So here it cut to a portion of it and I wanted to trim it down just a little bit. It cut to a portion of it, but then it stopped. And this time I was at least smart enough to stop so it didn't rip. So now I'm left with this like cut in my paper. I'm just going to fix it. And here's how I did it. So I put a piece of, I chose um, my white masking tape for a couple of reasons. First of all, because you're not going to be able to see it. All of my washi tape is colored. Second of all, is so when I flip it over, I could pick up the cut piece and push it back in so it matched up perfectly because the tape wasn't too sticky. It was just sticky enough. And then that 
lined up exactly where it was supposed to line up. That tape's going to hold them together while I glue it. And nobody will ever know that I cut that piece because it didn't work. You know what I'm saying? So now we're just going to start, we're going to start gluing stuff together. And then because I never have a plan, you know, I'm just making it up on the fly, aren't we all? Um, I decided pretty quickly that I was gluing my uh, backgrounds down flat, but I wanted something like it just seemed all too flat. So you could totally do it flat, but I wanted something else. So now I decided I was going to cut myself a bunch more um, of the sentiments and so that that way they were going to be stacked two whites and then their colored um, embossed sentiment. And then here's how I do the labels. Um, I just glued them down and then trimmed around them. If by chance I got a little bit of uh, extra white once I had them cut out, um, I just trimmed around them again. It was it was fine. Uh and then I did, again, so they would be the same level. I did two layers of white. And I used this one leftover sheet for all of the um, little sentiment labels. Just glue them down, trim them out. This is how this is how crafting was when I first got started. We didn't have beautiful um, dyes that made our life easier. You had to hand cut everything. And so it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> it doesn't really bother me to do that. And then these ones will just all get stacked white on white and then the blue. Um, and that's how I did all of them. You can see all the, the die cuts there just waiting to be glued. Um, I really like this font. I think it's a super pretty font. And the Mother's Day one, uh, the Mother's Day set is the same kind of font. So yeah, so technology was just not my friend. Yesterday, I was like, I'm going to do this voiceover. And then my sinuses were crazy bad. Like my allergies were, I don't even know if it's allergies. What My nose wouldn't stop running. That's pretty much what happened there. And so I didn't want to do the voiceover with like all of the sniffling, coughing breaks I was going to have to take, um, especially since I didn't know if my microphone was going to hold up or not. Here, this one I did trim down, and then I am mounting that on um, that navy cardstock. Um, and I just had to hold it there for a second because it, you know, does have more moisture with the paste, so it's a little bit more warped, um, but not for very long. And then I can just put my sentiment on it. So um, I didn't do the voiceover yesterday. My game plan today was to do the voiceover while Caitlin was taking a little nappy. Um, but when I woke up, my allergy sinus issue was still kind of bugging me. Um, and so I, I laid down when she laid down. Not, I, my intention was not to lay down for as long as she laid down, like her normal length. You know, there's no guarantees. There's no guarantees in, uh, in parenting. Um, but so I laid down for about, my intention was an hour, um, but then Peanut is at his dad's house and apparently he needed his eye drops, so he called me. So I really only got like 25 minutes, but it does seem to have helped my allergies enough that I felt like I could knock out the voiceover. Though while I was sitting here talking to you, I do know that my dear sweet little jelly bean got up from her nap early and that her father came up and snagged her up because um, I could hear her. <laughs> I could hear her. I don't know if you guys could. Um, so now our the rest of the day plan, we are hosting Memorial Day here as well as my sister's birthday. And um, so we are going to we're going to hit the grocery on a Sunday. Uh, God help us like truly. Um, so here you can see I did a couple of different orientations for the um, sentiments. One's down and to the right, this one's up and to the left, and the other one centered. You pick which one ever, you know, whichever one makes your heart happy. Um, I like these. I, I like them a lot. Even though they don't have a lot of um, coloring, they were fun to make. They were fast. And I think that any of the you know, dads or men in my life would be happy to receive them for birthdays or Father's Day or retirement or anything like that. Here, these are the new pearls that just came out with this release. They are called um, Pacific, Pacific Northwest Pearl uh, stickers. They have a lot of really great colors in there. So I picked those out and just accented my sentiments and then 
that's that's it. These are all three of the cards that we have made. So I hope that inspires you to kind of make for the more masculine in your life. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Those uh, My sale page will be linked below and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.